thing. Furthermore, can this tool unify the different data management alternative databases, basically? So the users need not be concerned. The user needs not be bothered by how the data is stored or how it's managed. And what we propose to solve this problem is create a data service. This data service manages the data for the user. And it does this depending on categories and keywords. It also works with different types of databases. Could be SQL databases, non-SQL databases, and HBase databases, or other type of part of database. And it has to be modular. Why? Because every time a new research unit institution wants to be part of this data service provider, it might be a different type of database. So it, it doesn't need to, you don't need to adapt the whole system to be able to join this new database instead of just being modular. It's like next module that creates more functionality. So an architecture. So this is our architecture. We have a user on the top, that is the person that is one some type of data. A data service that it manages the query and the data providers and well, the data providers. So the user API is basically a search, a search engine where you put what you want depending on keywords and categories. The data service itself is the one that manage, manages everything. It transforms the data, the, the query, so it becomes meaningful to the system and the system then gets the data. And a way of registering new databases providers. Okay. So we are using Java for this implementation. And we have servlets, we have Ajax, JavaScript. And right now we support MySQL and HBase databases. So as an example or more general view of this one. Say for example, we have these two tables. One is MySQL and one is HBase. So the first thing is you have to register those tables. So you go to our service, you fill the information, you register, then you do the same for the other two. And they sit here in the database providers. So at their, at their, they are ready to be used to. So if someone wants something that is inside those tables, you just can get it. And there you go. So someone wants type of measurement, so radiation measurement. And you convert that to a meaningful query using our search engine, which is the data the, from the user and the ISP. But what's the problem? The databases, they speak different languages. That's why one is SQL and the other one is HBase. So we need to transform this higher level query, which is I want something, to something that understands, the databases understand. And as a side note, you, for example, for MySQL, it's a relational database. It takes on rows and columns, and the queries are more intuitive. Whereas the HBase databases are depending on families, in families, attributes, and qualifiers, and they are non intuitive. So that means they, they speak basically different languages. So you have to have a translator to translate, basically. So say we solve that. And now we are going to get the data. You go at it, say, you get the data, ta, 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 and then you finish your table. You, you aggregate it. But what? It's like really <coughs> slow, slow, like sequentially. It's the, 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 the case that works, but it's just not the best one. So can we do better? Let's do it in part. So how do we do this in part? We have different ways of doing it in part. So the first way we tried was doing it one thread for each database. So as we see in the table, both tables are going to provide the data sequentially. So, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> what happens with it is, when you have more entries in your databases, it actually becomes slower. So your parallel algorithm is slower than your sequential. And that's really bad, right? Your parallel is faster. <laughs> so and as you go more entries, your performance goes down. So this means it doesn't scale. So our first idea of doing it in parallel, we can do it like a huge effort to get it done. Bravo, it didn't work. <laughs> so, so we said, okay, it's still parallel. There has to be a way of doing this that actually makes it faster. So we say, okay, instead of using each thread for each database, we can divide the data inside the database and use threads to put the data in the table. So for example, say I divide my tables using three rows three entries for each table. And then I add them in parallel. That would be 
be away. You can also divide the table in two entries per thread and do the same. So we did this, and then we find out that it actually works faster. And for this, I have two cases. One, when you had 10,000 entries for each table. And as you can see here, when you divide your tables using 20 threads, so 10,000 divided 20, so that it's like 50 entries each, each thread manages each 20, 20, uh, 50 entries, you get around 6.5 improvement. When you go to 10,000 entries, the improvement goes higher. So that means right now you can even get 50 times faster than your sequential approach. So if we look at the execution times, as we have more entries, this, the parallel version of the algorithm works faster as expected. So now it means it scales, which is great. And the performance also goes, grows exponentially. So that of doing in parallel, right now. So, okay, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm with the OSDC. So with the, we want to use this to help the OSDC. And the OSDC is an open science data infrastructure that allows users to have access to data cloud resources like machines and memory and all that. So we want to use our data service to provide the data, basically, topic that is going to be processed using the OSDC. So that's an extension of the work we're doing. So for our demonstration, Our service. Yeah. So okay, right now there's some way of registering the databases. So if you so you just fill the form, you submit. There is a way of also seeing which databases are currently supported. So we are around that post. Have information about the databases locally in the world. So that's and okay, so for the query part, so say for example, as I said, say you want radiation and then you want some measurements of that radiation. So these are some made up tables. So you get information from three tables basically, one that has information. And if we go back to the initial case, when you have more information, you can have better research results. If you take out information that you don't know, you might think that somewhere here you don't have anything. But in reality, you do have it. And it might be relevant <coughs> when you add it. You can see. So that's, that's a contribution of our work. <coughs> so back to the question. How can we create a tool that allows users, we create a data service that pretty much does that? gets data in a way that the user can be more happy with it without even worrying where it is. They <coughs> want this, and, it's, and he gets it. Can this tool unify this data? Yes, it can. There's, we just need to be a translator between the different type of databases that exist. So some conclusions and future work. So the data discovery that we get is, is, is challenging doing this because when you talk about data, data might mean something for some field and something else for something for another field. And it might be the same. For example, if you think of coordinates, coordinates in astronomy are not the same coordinates in geology. But when you go to the engine and you tell the engine, I want coordinates, then, then you have to be, the, the, the system should be able to handle that and decide what is exactly what you want. So that's the challenging, one of the challenges part. And the parallelization, as we saw, works better when you divide the data instead of dividing the databases to do in parallel, which is better to do that way. And as a future work, we are going to work on the semantics part of this to decide a better way of getting, I mean, look, querying the data and the databases. So that's it. And before you start with the questions, <laughs> I would like to thank you. Uh, 
thank you SME for having me. It's been great. You guys are really nice. I really enjoyed my time here. And I hope you do great things. So right now, okay, that's the next question. <laughs> Single way that you have to accommodate to that. We better accommodate to you instead of you accommodating to us. 
yeah, but putting things together, then at a certain point you have one thing and one thing, you have to somehow have to glue them together. Yeah. That's something we're working on, designing 